Okay, now let's actually get into this for reals. Scala Kylan battle theme is really good though. So, Xehanort's Freaky Adventures in the Nether Plane. The game. Let me know if you'd like to adjust the volumes if you can't hear me. So, the finale to this game will come out soon, and that will surely show us some crazy stuff, I'm sure. Okay, just wanted to test to see my chat box was working. They say words like thou. I don't want to dwell on this trailer too much because it's like the least interesting of the three. I want... Stay true to light. Xehanort's looking kind of cool though. Alright. Kingdom Hearts Dark Road. With sad funerals edition. Alright, not much to say on that trailer, just because it's more Dark Road. Um... It's, um, I'm interested uh, to see how that game ends, because the Union Cross ending was pretty crazy. So maybe Dark Road will introduce some new stuff. It's got a bunch of new characters who might end up showing up again. Who knows, but let's keep watching. So this next trailer is for a new mobile game, which I'm not too big on, honestly. I was kind of, I didn't really want a new mobile game. I don't really want to play on a, on a mobile phone. I'd rather this was on consoles or PC or something. But oh well, it's what it is what it is. Light and darkness brought about the beginning and hearts nurtured it. This guy's styling. So this town was shown off in the Union Cross ending. This is Scarlet Ed Kylum, but it looks like a little bit different than what we know. But this was shown off in the Union Cross ending. So this must be the player character. I assume you customise your own character in this one. Yes, this is Scala. Ooh, that aspect ratio. You know it's a mobile game. Yeah, lost interest in Dark Road, yeah. Yeah, I'm planning on playing it for sure, because I recently got a new mobile phone that's a lot better than my old one. It looks like... the combat does look pretty cool, it does look a lot more interesting. It's obviously using like Kingdom Hearts 3 assets a lot. And it looks like you use like amiibos of characters to fight. Also Kingdom Hearts 3 locations. All this is running on a phone, I feel like my phone would explode. Ooh, I like the character designs though. Where's this? Let's we'll go back through the trailer in like slow motion. Somewhere there's mobile cage fans freaking out, yeah. Ooh, brain. He looks pretty cool. Kingdom Hearts Missing Link. So there is a, quite a bit to unpack there. Closed beta test in 2022 for iOS. So let's let's like let's like slow mo this and have another look. So I'll put the playback speed to half, and I'll turn the volume down because oi. No, maybe maybe half speed is too slow. 
There we go. So let's have another look, because there was some interesting stuff there. Is Kenshin Impact? My phone will definitely explode. Yeah, with Kingdom Hearts slash... <laughs> yeah, I do want to try it, though. It does look kind of interesting, even though it's on the phone. Who knows, it might be ported onto PC or consoles. There are some mobile games that have done that before. So I'm assuming this is your player that you can customize, I assume. And there's the Ephema statue. So we saw this Ephema statue in the Union Cross ending. So this seems to be Scarlet Ad Kylum, but maybe like an older version of it. Because it looks quite a bit different to the one we explore in KH3. The Missing Link. It, you do get to like explore rooftops and, and crap, though it's kinda kinda neat. It's a very weird overworld. The combat does look pretty cool though. It does look flashy. So yeah, these are very like very obvious like Kingdom Hearts 3 like effects and assets, and I'm pretty down with that. And they you're using like figurines of the characters to fight. Got Earth Magic. So this is Kingdom of Corona, which is interesting. And the outfit, you can change your outfit, that's neat. And there's like a female character with a pretty cool looking outfit. You can a Terra figure. I don't know where this city is. What is this city? What is this city looking area? Hmm, it doesn't look familiar. Maybe this is just another part of Scala, like the, like the, another part of Scala. Looks like a recolor of the pirate's costume of Port Royal. Yeah, probably. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Th this game looks like it's reusing a lot of Kingdom Hearts 3 assets, so that wouldn't surprise me. But I'm okay with that. So yeah, another part of Scala. These are like the heartless enemies from, uh, KH3 as well. These Heartless I recognize. Travis Town? I don't know. It didn't look like Travis Town to me. But that's possible. Maybe. Who knows? Uh, this place looks like the Forest of Thorns from 0 0.2. Also, multiplayer. Uh, we get some multiplayer action here. There are some other players, like down there in the left, holding a keyblade. There's some interesting looking keyblades too, fighting dark side. It the combat looks pretty fun. It's a shame it's on a mobile game. Or part of the new town, maybe. So there's Brain. So Brain came here from I guess like the Union Cross ending is kind of confusing, but he came into the into this city from like using time travel shenanigans or something or he ended up there and then he saw the Ephema statue in the center of town so he's there now and we finally get to see him in 3d that's neat still can't believe his name is brain and there it is kingdom hearts the missing link so um before we move on to the real juicy kingdom hearts stuff um, what what are your overall thoughts on this? It's a mobile game, so that on its own kind of makes me a little bit more on it. Um, yeah. Oh, we can definitely make our guild slash party. That'd be really fun, actually. We all keyblade wielders now, yeah. We shall be the pixel keys. <laughs> that sounds so... It, I, it would probably be quite fun. If my phone doesn't explode, I'll give it a try. Yeah, I'll give it a go, obviously. Um, I just can't help but feel a little bit like uh, I, I, I wish it wasn't on a mobile phone. I don't know. Um, I just don't, I'm not into playing games on phones. I'd, I'd rather, it feels just a little bit restrictive. Um, I'd rather use controllers and all that. I know you can get controllers on phones, but still. Um, but, you know, there's a chance that this could be like ported to consoles and PC because I've seen a few mobile games do that before. So that is a possibility, but it'll probably be a mobile phone game for a while. 
um i'm okay with it um it looks quite cool um the combat looks really fun actually and the multiplayer looks interesting um it's just the mobile game stuff that's all that bled to me but um i'm sure it's it'll be fun Honestly, I think it'd be a fun game because of the party thing. Yeah, that's definitely a big factor. I'm obviously going to give it a go, and I am quite excited, but uh, I'd prefer it wasn't a mobile game, is the thing. Okay, let me up the volume again. Okay. And it's doing a closed beta test in 2022. Genshin did the same thing. Yeah, it was, Genshin was a mobile game. Okay, now here's the real juicy stuff. The Kingdom Hearts 4 trailer. This is Quadratum in the daytime. This place appearing in the daytime never occurred to me for some reason. Big boy trailer. Heart resides within the soul, which is in turn guided by the fate to its rightful place. This place looks nothing like a Kingdom Hearts location I've ever seen. This looks very, like, crazy Final Fantasy. <laughs> Choice is yours once more. Okay, so we'll watch the whole trailer and then I'll, like, pause it and go through it. Shot for shot, sort of thing. Sora be looking styling in his new, in his new get-up. We've got Strelitzia, she's here now. You've been asleep since you arrived in this world seven days ago. Sora! Quadratum, here it is. Afterworld? Hmm, interesting. And there's the big old dark side. Yeah, it looks like a dark side, but just super mega scary dark side. So it's picking up cars, it's so cool, but it's like kind of terrifying. This is giving me Bayonetta 3 trailer vibes. Oh, and there he goes, rushing off into action, as he does. God, his outfit's cool. Keyblade. Okay, I don't think this is actually gameplay, I think this is just a scene made for the trailer to look like gameplay, just to give you an idea. Uh, I don't think this is what gameplay will actually look like. Games tend to do this for their announcement trailers, but it does look really cool. Oh sick, you've got Drill now. I was confused who that person was and had to stare at the train for a while to understand who Sora was. Yeah, I sort of did a double take. Okay, so I think that's Lushu and the Master of Masters. Most likely. Kingdom Hearts 4. And it just hit me all Strelitzia, yeah. Kingdom Hearts, but no longer wholesome. Also, we got Donald and Goofy. Glad to see that they get some spotlight in this trailer so they're looking for someone it's got to be that's Hades right and then they died magic in the making okay let's 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 Let's, let's, let's go back. Let's skip to where the stuff gets good. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> let me just catch up with chat. Kingdom Hearts but no longer wholesome. Kingdom Hearts but make it violent. The part where the building flips while sliding is just, mm, yeah, it's really cool. I really like it when games play with the environment. Oh yeah. It looks so freaking fun. I can't wait for the fashion clothing release for this game. Oh yeah, because it looks more like real world clothing than your average Kingdom Hearts game. 
game that uses their environments is just chef kiss. That's a Japanese voice for Hades? I thought it was Hades. It must be Hades. I can tell because dub different voice actor and all. Yeah. So quickly, that ha I knew that had to be Hades because who else do we know that uses like a blue flame? Um, it's very random because I thought that we would, that KH3 would be the last we'd see of Hercules. Just because I don't really know what else they could really do with that world. But if Hades is going to be there, then sure. Um, doesn't necessarily mean that Olympus is coming back, but it's interesting they're roping in like Hades. Uh, which makes sense because, you know, we're assuming that Sora's dead now or in the afterlife or something like that. And Hades is the Lord of the Dead. So Donald and Goofy going to him for help is makes a lot of sense. If Sora's in some sort of alternate afterlife, then surely Hades will know something about it being the Lord of the Dead. Um, it's just really interesting to me that they're roping in a Disney character in such a major way. Um, someone like Hades is interesting to me. Maybe it's just a fake out and Hades isn't actually going to be too important, but who knows. Um, but yeah, that's interesting to me. It, it's, it also sort of eases my nerves a bit that the Disney stuff isn't going away. Uh, this is obviously like looking very Final Fantasy-esque, but the Disney is still very much there, uh, which is great because I don't want the Disney to go. It's a big part about what makes Kingdom Hearts what it is. So there are a lot of people that are saying, that, oh, there aren't going to be Disney World in the next game. And I'm like, I don't really buy that. All Kingdom Hearts games have Disney Worlds. What each game has in common is that they all have Disney Worlds. So I think the Disney Worlds are still going to be here. And the Hades and Donald and Goofy stuff just sort of helps me uh, realize that. Okay, um, so let's go in this uh, again. I'll slow it down again so that we can look at all the details. Okay, and I'll lower the volume a tad as well. Okay, first of all, Sora looking styling as hell. Look at that. Um, Honestly, love his outfit, because it looks more- it's definitely supposed to be like a more realistic modern day outfit so he can fit in with this realistic looking city. Uh, because his big yellow clown shoes and all that would definitely stand out. That hasn't stopped him from going into different worlds and standing out in the past, but uh, since this game seems to heavily revolve around Quadratum, uh, it kind of just makes sense to give him this, uh, this new uh, getup. Um, oh man, a lot of chat messages just came in at once. Uh, yeah, plot twist hate just comes keyblade below. Um, so yeah, uh, honestly, his hairstyle, his new haircut, um, I wasn't like, I was like kind of mad on at first, but I'm quickly like warming up to it. Uh, I do like it. It, it. It's very Sora. He looks slightly older now, because bear in mind, Sora's 16. Uh, Sora's 16 now. Um, in, um... Because like, he's 14 in Kingdom Hearts 1, and then between Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, there's that one year time skip, so he's 15 in KH2. And there's not that much time between KH2 and 3 uh, in Universe, so he's probably still 15 in KH3. And then in Kingdom Hearts 3 Reimind, the DLC, uh, there's a year time skip. So Sora's now 16. Unless he doesn't age in the afterlife or whatever. Or wherever he is. I don't see any reason as to why he should still be 15. I don't know. But he looks a little bit older. So moving on. He wakes up. Is this Sora's, like, own apartment building like his own like house like home room or something or does this belong to Strelitzia or are they gonna be roommates oh my god that would be so freaking fun <laughs> oh man they're taking on the big city together that'd be so freaking nice <laughs> still um I was what discussing this trailer with my sister earlier and they reckon that it would be really nice if this were Sora's like 
uh, apartment room and uh, he or like flat or whatever you want to call it and um, this is like a place you go back to every now and then to just vibe you know go through items or like just check up on your gear and just sort of like hang out uh, that would be nice that would be fun <laughs> and they were roommates that'd be neat so he wakes up answers the door and who do we see? So this is obviously Strelitzia, I believe. Uh, another character from the mobile game Union Cross. Um, so if what she said is true, and this is the afterlife, then her saying that makes a lot of sense. Just because we know that she is also dead. Uh, she got... Uh, uh, spoiler alert. There's spoilers all over this. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Um... She gets killed in Union Cross by an evil dark entity who was puppeteering Ventus, um, and then she died. So her being here in this somewhat afterlife makes a lot of sense uh, with Sora, so that's that. Uh, plot twist, Sora's greatest enemy in Cage 4 is the landlord and paying rent. <laughs> Man, that is true. Greatest enemy in the world. Spider-Man 2 vibes of Intusa Togo remote. <laughs> vibes. So here's Trelitzia, she's here, she's in hell, heaven, whatever. Okay, you've been asleep since you arrived in this world seven days ago. So what I don't get, also this is a really nice shot, this is like what my laptop's wallpaper is going to be for the next year. Um, so Sora's been asleep here, what I don't get is how this continues on from the secret ending of KH3. Because in Kingdom Hearts 3, you fight your Zora on top of the 104 building. And there are two endings depending on whether you win or lose. And it's really unclear as to which ending is right. They could both be right. Who knows? Um, but I'm wondering how that goes from that to this. Or if that even happened at all. So Sora's been asleep here for seven days. So he hasn't been here for very long, but he's been sleeping. Uh, which is interesting, especially because in the bad ending of the Yazora fight, Sora sort of gets crystallized. So maybe that's how he was got to sleep or something? I don't know. Ventus is evil. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, Ventus was like possessed by some kind of dark entity um, that ended up killing, using him to kill Strelitzia. I it's been sort of implied or hinted at that that evil entity is what it would end up becoming Venetus. I believe that maybe it sort of merged with the dark part of Ventus's heart, and then that's how uh, it sort of becomes Venetus. But who knows? We'll see. We'll see. She's sh she's small. Whoa. I just want to take a good look at, like, Sora's room. Um, looking really nice and clean. I love it. Would live there. He's got a nice little clock. That looks like a star. That's a nice lamp. Has he got a TV back there? I don't know. It looks like it. It's, it's a nice, nice, nice looking place. Like it very much. Yeetus Venetus. <laughs> this is Quadratum. A world full of life. Oh wait, there was like stuff to unpack there. Uh, I noticed someone on Twitter point out the the Dream Eater sign here. D Eater, Dream Eater maybe could be a reference. Maybe Dream Eaters are coming back. Who knows? Uh, there's just a bunch of other like random. Uh, like signs and stuff. Nothing seems to jump out at me. But for you and I, it's similar to an afterlight, afterworld. So, Australia has some nice boots. She does. She's styling quite well, actually. So, um, so this seems to be the afterworld. I have a theory, just to just to pose on you for a sec. So, 
So Quadradum. So it feels like this is, seems very similar to The World Ends With You. In case you're not sure how The World Ends With You goes, I've never played either of them. Well, I have actually. I've never beaten either of them. But I do understand sort of the basic gist of them. Basically, in The World Ends With You, there's sort of this afterworld called the Underground. Or the, un yeah, the Underground, I think. Um, and it's sort of like this alternate plane of existence where dead people end up to play the Reaper's game to get a second chance at life. Um, so The World Ends With You takes place in Shibuya, uh, the city that Quadradon's obviously based on. There's like the real ground, which is like the living plane, and then there's the underground, which is like where all the dead people are. I believe that the same thing is happening here, where I bet that there's like a bunch of like pedestrians and civilians around here, but none of them can see Sora because they're in the real ground and Sora's in the underground. Um, so if you're in the underground, you're dead. So no one in the real ground can see you but you can see them. Uh, I bet that's what's happening here with Sora. I think he's in the underground and no one can see him, but he can see them. And I bet Strelitzia is also in the same place as Sora. That's why she can see him. Because she's dead too, obviously. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. I completely forgot about The World Ends With You. Yeah, I, this is also why I'm believing more than ever that The World Ends With You characters are returning for this game. Uh, that's what I think. So I just wanted to float that by you. That's that's my theory. So there's a big dark ball of darkness and the dark side pops out. It looks really scary. Um, oh my goodness gracious, I completely skimmed over that possibility because we met Neku and Shiki in DDD, yeah. Um, and there has been a new World Ends With You game released since then, which I they might be taking some stuff from for this game as well. Um, so yeah, I, I really want the World Ends With You characters to return, just because I really like them. I like their interactions with Sora and Riku. I think they are some of my favourite interactions in that game. So... I'm hoping that they return and I think there's a good chance because it feels like they're really taking a lot out of The World Ends With You for this. So I would be surprised if they don't show up, honestly. All right, this is where I step in. Yeah, give us your monstrous creature analysis. So this definitely looks like a dark side. It's obviously a heartless. It's got like the smoky attack going on. Uh, it can like pick up stuff. It's a heartless because it, it 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 must be a heartless because it has like the hollow heart symbol in its chest. It's got the wings. It looks like a dark side, but like a supersized version. Okay. And then here comes our boy. Save us. There he is. Oh my god, he looks really cool. He looks like a Final Fantasy character now. This looks very Final Fantasy. Uh, love his outfit. It's great. Want that outfit for real life. The intro of the monster is great. The follow-up establishing shots too good and showing how big it is, but... Some of the texture department might have done an oopsie. Really? How? What did they do? If, is it because some of the bits are kind of see through Because that looks intentional to me. Still a bit sniffy today, sorry. Please explain. When it comes to design giant enemy monsters, there are two types of enemies you can get. Not just texture, but special effects as well. This guy's literally recording on his phone. There he goes. Also, I wanted to point out Sora's sweet kicks. Which I'm sorry I just said out loud. 
Um, I like Sora. Sora no longer has giant oversized shoes, but they are still yellow. He's still rocking the yellow, which I appreciate. His whole color theme is still on point. The blacks and the reds and the yellows on his shoes. So even though his outfit does look quite a bit different, he's still Sora through and through. Yeah, I'm gonna buy those shoes. Same. Buy this whole outfit. Honestly, it's great. Struggling with grammar, yeah. This is a rough draft, yeah. This is like the announcement trailer. It's of it's no doubt gonna change a lot from here to release. So, sweet kicks. That was the part I was waiting for, Pixel. <laughs> the yellow is the cherry on top. It's true. It's iconic banana shoes. And then he leaps into action, chucks out the keyblade, and then we're in it. This looks wicked, wait. Oh my god, this looks so cool. So, let's linger on this a bit. So we got some like game, I don't think this is an actual gameplay shot. Again, I think this is just like a, um, like a scene constructed for the trailer that looks like gameplay. Because I know a lot of games that have done that. Kingdom Hearts 3 did that with its announcement trailer, I believe. Uh, maybe this is gameplay, but if it is gameplay, then it's really smooth and fluid looking gameplay. Because uh, it doesn't... I, I, I don't get the feeling that there's actually someone controlling Sora here. It feels like a, just a scene constructed for the trailer. Um, but still, that doesn't... But this is supposed to give you an idea of what gameplay might look like. <laughs> That's so good, I cannot, yeah. So he jumps, he flow motion is back, you got the parkour stuff. Freeze frame on that for a sec. Literally uses the keychain on like the Mickey Mouse keychain to grapple onto the street lamp and hoist himself over Spider-Man style. Incredibly cool because the keychain part of the keyblade, I feel like, doesn't get used much. Uh, which is cool. This seems to be an evolution of Keyblade transformations, where it's like different parts of the Keyblade transform, not the entire thing. Um, also, I want to point out the little HUD. So we've got the command menu, it's pretty basic, and then we got Sora's health I image. It seems like they're sticking with the uh, the renders and not going back to the illustrations, like the Nomura art versions. Uh, they still could. This still could, it's still a work in progress. I think it'd be nice if they had it as an option, where you could unlock a Nomura Art HUD sprite. Uh, that'd be neat. Um, so I haven't forgotten about you, Tiago. When you're ready, just say what you want to say about the Heartless. I haven't forgotten. <laughs> cough, cough, Keyblade. Yeah, it is similar. I will grant you that. Maybe it's similar kind of powers. So he, he flow motions. The flow motion element animation looks quite similar. Again, he's able to grapple onto things using the keychain. It's really cool. And then he leaps off. Wall running is returning. Confirmed. Um, this looks a, this is a really cool shot. He's so big, it really shows his scale. Also the little like black uh, vines or like little darkness vines crawling up the wall with him is really interesting. It's really creepy. Uh, Heartless aren't going easy on him this time for sure. So he's wall running again, so that's returning. And then he does a leap. Uh, you can still slide, he goes into a building. Flow motion animation. And then he does this attack, which I'm, it looks like a button prompt appears on the screen. This looks like a quick time event of sorts, where a button prompt appears on the screen, that little black circle in the middle. Uh, that looks like a button prompt. So you press the button and then he does this attack. His keyblade looks like it turns into a drill, another sort of keyblade transformation sort of thing. And <laughs> the mods can take care of that with the keyblade, yeah. So he drills. So 
Yeah, it looks like the kingdom key itself turns into the drill. It's not like a different keyblade that transforms, which is interesting. So this seems to be a new take on the keyblade transformation mechanic. So he shoots the drill out. Ah, uh, like the titan fight. Oh, in oh yeah, interesting. There he goes. And he maybe gets squished or something. And then I think this is Lushu and the Master of Masters, because who else do we know wears black coats? Who's currently relevant? And that's that. Incredibly cool, very excited. Also, the text is different. The Kingdom Hearts logo? The 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 text. It's not the same. It's it's got the four in the background, but the the Kingdom Hearts like font, it's different. Similar. It's not that I dis it's not that I dislike it. It is different though, which is interesting. I guess you know new arc. They'd want to change some stuff up, like mix it up a bit. They want to like switch it up a bit, maybe for the new arc. So that might be it. And we got Donald. Donald looks like he's using magic to, as like a light. Which is fun. Where are they? Are they in the underworld? So they're looking for someone. So yeah, I believe they're probably trying to find Sora. But they're looking for who I think is Hades. Because they believe that he can help. Uh, you know, as I said before. It's like the old font. Yeah, it kind of looks like the like beta font for Kingdom Hearts 1. Yeah, the blue flame. The blue flame and everything. The fact that it's about death in the underworld, blah, blah, blah. It obviously has to be Hades, especially if his voice is the same, like you say. Um, and then Donald and Goofy freaking die. And that's that. Yeah, they are looking for Hades. That's what I meant. That I meant like looking for um, Sora is like their ultimate goal, but they're looking for Hades so that they can find Sora. Uh, that's what I meant. Kingdom Hearts 20th anniversary event. A recap video of this event will be available at a later date. So that will include probably the whole event. So like the orchestra section, the Q&A section, all that good stuff. Looking forward to that. And that's it, I think. Yeah, so... Excellent stuff. Love it. God, this trailer is going to be like my wallpaper for my phone, for my computer. It's going to be all over the place. So, basically, love it. Looking so forward to, forward to it. Um, yeah, I am so excited. Kingdom Hearts 4 is real. It's strange, too. A lot of people I heard were saying, like, Kingdom Hearts 4, is it too soon for Kingdom Hearts 4? I don't think it's too soon, because it wasn't that much time in between Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. Uh, just because there was a long gap between 2 and 3 doesn't mean there have to be a long gap again. Um... Basically, basically love it. Seri seriously, for real, love it. Yeah. All right, so we saw the trailer. We looked at it closely. We saw all the pretty things. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff I missed. So yeah, uh, that was the Kingdom Hearts 4 trailer. Massively looking forward to that. Thank you for bearing me with me through all that. I know analysis, that sort of thing, is not something I usually do. And that was a little bit grubby and all over the place with the pausing and the showing my screen and all that uh thanks for bearing with me it was fun to just sort of look through that and share it with you it would have been nice if i could show my initial reactions to it um but there was no way i would have been able to stay spoiler free before this point so that's just how it be i think this was the next best thing for us to just rewatch it and bounce some ideas off each other uh and then there's the second type of giant boss or the fight it yourself where zoom outs are safe for the boss's intro 
and the important phase changes where the camera mostly stay on you. You have not either throw it, um, wait, if you throw yourself at it or systematically take it down, uh, take down the monster, this type of boss design is usually more close up and detailed and less environment background stuff. Simple example will include the final boss of Sonic Unleashed. Can't pronounce that, can't pronounce that, can't pronounce that. From the Immortal Hunter series, yeah, okay. And there's another example but I can't quite remember. Yeah. Sorry, I can't pronounce most of those monsters, but um, I do see what you mean. Yeah. It is still early, early goings, but for an early trailer, it looks fantastic. It looks like it's pretty, pretty far along. 